All right, we all love those super smooth, seamless transitions that people like Daniel Schiffer and Ben TK create. I mean, they look awesome. The thing is though, to create a great seamless transition, you need to know what to look for. So that's why in this video, I'm gonna teach you four awesome seamless transitions that will make your videos look way better. And at the same time, give you the tools necessary to create the more advanced seamless transitions like Ben TK and Daniel Schiffer. So all of that stuff and more coming up. But first, if you're new here, my name is Billy Ripka and I make weekly to to resolve tutorials about different effects, transitions, and workflows that'll help you become a better editor. So if you wanna level up your editing skills, click that subscribe button and the bell notification to stay up to date on the newest videos put out. But let's get into it. So the first transition that we're gonna go over is the whip pan transition. Now this is one of the most widely known transitions out there and it's pretty simple to edit if the footage is shot right. To make a good seamless whip pan transition, we need a shot where the camera is moving to the right or left, and then right at the end, it just whips really hard and creates a lot of motion blur. And for the second shot, instead of getting our subject and then whipping at the end again, what we'll do is at the beginning, we'll whip into our subject. And once again, we wanna be conscious of colors because it's gonna help us create a more seamless transition. So if you're whipping the first shot into the grass, you should also have our second shot coming from the grass so that it's gonna look like just one continuous shot. So now if you shot your seamless whip pan transition correct, it only really should need a few cuts. So on our first clip, we'll wanna move forward until we find the place that has the most motion blur like this and we'll make a cut and remove everything else to the right of it. Now on our second clip, in the beginning, we'll find the place where we're also having the most motion blur like this and make a cut and remove everything to the left of it. Now just put both the clips together. So now if we take a look at it, you can see that it, first of all, it looks super seamless and that's because the motion blur is actually hiding the cut along with matching the colors that are in the motion blur. Now if one part of the whip is so much faster or so much slower, you can actually use speed ramping to go ahead and fix that and match the speeds correctly. So what we're gonna do is right click on our first clip and go down to retime controls and we'll find the place where it starts to whip the camera. Then click this drop down arrow right here and hit add speed point and grab the top blue tab right here and drag it up to about 200% like this. Now we'll right click again and go down to retime curve and we'll hit this drop down arrow right here on the top left and uncheck retime frame and check retime speed. Now we can see our speed change from one to 200% and that is not smooth. So we gotta make that super smooth. We'll wanna click on the keyframe and hit the curve button right here. And with these handles, we'll wanna drag it out like this so that we're creating a speed ramp right here. Then we'll go ahead and do the same exact thing, but to the other clip. Now the second seamless transition is also like the poster child for all seamless transitions. It's called the frame blocking or the masking transition. To shoot the frame blocking transition, we just need something to move past the frame. So whether it's a tree or a sign or a person or whatever, we just need something to move past the frame. Now for both of your shots, you need to have the movement going in one direction. So if your first shot is moving to the right, your second shot also needs to be moving to the right. Now that brings me to the edit part of this transition. So in DaVinci Resolve on our timeline, we have our two clips. This first clip is the one that we want to transition from. And also it's a clip that has the post wiping in front of it like this. And the second clip is the one that we want to transition to. So what we'll do is find the last frame where this post is covering the right side and then move it above to video layer two and then grab our second clip and move it under just like this. So now you can see that there's this overlapping section right here. Now what we'll do is click on this first clip right here and go into the color tab. Now now that we're in the color tab, we need to go ahead and mask out everything that comes after this pole right here. So what we'll do is go down to the Windows tab right here and click on the pen tool. Now I'm gonna move forward one frame by hitting right on my keyboard and we'll go ahead and draw a mask right at the edge of this post and make sure that it's a pretty wide mask. So like make sure it goes way out here. So now that we have our mask in place, you'll see that nothing happens at all. And that's because we don't have our alpha output enabled. So to do that, we'll go to the node section right here and right click 
go down to add alpha output. So now this alpha output is gonna pop up right here and we'll just click and drag it to the blue section right here. Now clearly the mask is masking out the wrong section. So what we'll do is go down in the window tab right here and we'll click this button and it's just gonna invert it like this. So now that we have that all set, I'm gonna go over here to this little drop down menu and turn off our power windows so that I can see the edge of our mask and it's honestly pretty rough. So to blend that better, I'm gonna go down to the softness in our window tab and just drag it up ever so slightly, somewhere around like 1.5 seems to be a really good natural look. So now once your heart is content with how that looks, we'll actually go ahead and turn back on our power window because we need to actually go ahead and animate this mask forward. Now to animate stuff, we need to use keyframes. So we have to open up our keyframe section, which is right here. Then we'll enable our keyframes by clicking this diamond button under corrector one because this is the node that we're doing all of our work in. So if you're doing this effect in corrector two, enable the keyframes under corrector two and so on and so forth. However, just enabling keyframes is not enough. We actually have to slightly move our mask and we can just move it right back to the original place. But by doing that, it's gonna place our first keyframe right here. Now just move back one keyframe and pull this mask all the way off. This will just make sure that our mask doesn't show up until we actually want it to. Now move forward four frames and drag our mask forward like this. And then move forward four more frames and drag the mask forward again. And every single time, just go ahead and resize it. Make sure that it's adjusting the way it should until it's all the way off the screen like this. Now, once you finished masking, you wanna make sure that it actually looks good. So to do that, we'll actually start moving backwards frame by frame to make sure that this mask is following the edge of that post. Now to make sure that it's actually correct, we'll disable the alpha output just briefly and move backwards frame by frame and adjusting it to the edge so that it looks good. And once it's to your liking, go ahead and enable your alpha output again, and there you go. The third seamless transition that you're gonna learn is called the frame fill. And the idea is kind of similar to the frame blocking or the mask transition, but instead of using a mask like we did earlier, the idea is to transition from one clip to another by filling the frame with a color. Whether it's covering your lens with your hand and pulling it off at a new location, the possibilities are endless with this type of transition as long as you can match the color of an object in the frame so that we can make it seamless. So to edit the frame fill transition, we're we're gonna go to our first clip and find the place where the frame is being completely filled just like this. And we'll make a cut right here and remove everything to the right of it. Then on our second clip, we'll find the place where our frame is being completely filled, but it's just about to back up and reveal the rest of our shot. So we'll make a cut here and remove everything to the left and then place both clips together like so. Now, if you don't like how slow the transition is, you can go ahead and retime it and make it faster, but I'm personally okay with this. Now the fourth seamless transition is called the match move. So the match move is pretty straightforward. If our first shot is moving to the right, the next shot we will want to be moving towards the right also. The reason why is because the motion itself is gonna be the transition, especially if we can match that speed because it's gonna seem like one thing is just flowing right into the other. Now to actually edit the match move transition, it's super simple because honestly, the movement is the transition as long as you guys have footage that's moving in the same direction. But let's just say that I don't. So right here, I have a clip that's moving forward and the next clip is moving away. What I can do is either reverse the first clip right here so that it's moving backwards or reverse the second clip so that it's moving forwards. And I'll do that by clicking on the clip and hitting R and then checking reverse speed and then hit change. Now you can see that both clips are moving in the same direction. So all I'll do is find where there's a lot of movement speed in the second clip and cut it down to that. And I'll also do that in the first clip and now we'll just put both of them together so that the movement helps us flow into the next shot. And once you get the basics of the match move transition, you can also add in a person and their movement over multiple clips like this. This is considered a match move transition because both the camera and my wife are moving in the same direction. Now I realize that these are pretty beginner level seamless transitions and the reason why I'm even telling you guys these is because if you can master these building blocks, you can then create some insane looking seamless transitions by using these methods right here. Now after learning these four seamless 
seamless transitions. If you're looking for a quick and easy drag and drop transition, I got you. I just created this awesome drag and drop shape transition pack for DaVinci Resolve. So click the link in the description today to get those transitions and make your videos look so much cooler. If you thought this video was helpful, give it a like and also share it with your friends so that they can put these transitions in their videos too. And if you want more videos like this, click on the top for a playlist with all of my DaVinci Resolve tutorials or click on the bottom for a video that YouTube thinks that you would like. But till the next one, peace.